In this video, we're going to review the bones of the cranium and the face. So I'm going to go through each of these pictures, all that you have access to on Blackboard, and go through the bones and the surface markings of the bones. And again, we'll go through several slides so you'll get all the parts at some point throughout this video. On this one, we'll start up here, and this is the frontal bone. Down here, we have the nasal bone. There are two that are fused. D here is actually the surface marking the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. I'll show you the ethmoid bone in another picture, but this is a perpendicular plate. That is the surface marking of the ethmoid bone. And as you review these, remember a lot of your questions on your quizzes and tests are going to ask you the surface marking and then the bone. So in this case, the surface marking would be the perpendicular plate and the bone would be the ethmoid bone. Here we have the maxillary bone. Here we have the zygomatic bone. Here we have the mandible. The alveoli of the mandible are right in here where the teeth are located. And this is the mental foramina. Again, frontal bone, nasal bone, perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, maxillary bone, zygomatic bone, mandible, alveoli, mental foramina. Here we're going to look up close at some of these bones. Here again you have the frontal bone. Here you have the, the supraorbital margin. And then within that supraorbital margin, you have the supraorbital notches or foramen. They can either be a hole or they can be just a notch in that supraorbital margin. Okay, in that supraorbital margin. Here you see the nasal bone up close. You have the maxillary bone here, but this specific surface marking is the zygomatic process of the maxillary bone. Surface marking is the zygomatic process of the maxillary bone. And it's called that because it's right here you have the zygomatic bone. So this is a zygomatic bone. This is a zygomatic process of the maxillary bone. Looking at the inferior view of the skull, here we have the temporal bone. You see the mandibular fossa, where the mandible is going to articulate, and you can also see the mastoid process of the temporal bone. Here you have the occipital bone. We have the jugular foramina. We have the occipital condyles, condyles being a smooth surface. We have the foramen magnum and we have the external occipital protuberance of the occipital bone. Again, temporal bone, mandibular fossa, mastoid process, jugular foramina, occipital bone, occipital condyles, foramen magnum, and external occipital protuberance. Now we're looking from the inferior view, looking up towards the teeth. So here you have the maxillary bone, but this specific area, the top of your mouth, is actually the palatine process of the maxillary bone. And the reason it's called that is because back here, in the back of the top of your mouth, is the palatine bone. So again, this is the palatine process of the maxillary bone and this is the palatine bone. Back here you have the vomer. This again in the maxillary bone is the alveoli. Again, maxillary bone, but more specifically the surface marking is the palatine process of the maxillary bone. The palatine bone, the vomer, and the alveoli of the maxillary bone. Here we're looking inside the skull. Let's go through the bones first. Here you have the temporal bone. You have the occipital bone. 
you have the sphenoid bone, you have the frontal bone, and you have the ethmoid bone. Let's start with the ethmoid bone. This whole thing is the ethmoid bone. Remember when we looked at the front of the face, we were looking, you could see the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Here and here are the cribiform plate of the ethmoid bone, and this center ridge is called the cristigalli. Again, ethmoid bone, cribiform plate on each side, cristigalli down this center, and the perpendicular plate, again, you would see from the anterior view of the skull. This bone here that has a butterfly-like shape to it is this phenoid bone. You have some wings here. You have on top, you have the lesser wing. On the bottom, you have the greater wings. Lesser wings, greater wings. You have the optic foramina, where the optic nerve is going to come through. And you also have this area right here, which is called the cella tersica. That's where the pituitary gland is going to sit from the brain. So again, sphenoid bone, lesser wing, greater wings, optic foramina, and cella tersica. Back here on the occipital bone, you can see what's called the hypoglossal foramina. This is also the foramen magnum, which we've already covered. So again, that's looking inside the skull, the bones and the surface markings that you can see inside the skull. Now we're looking at a lateral view. This gives you another picture of the nasal bone. But now you can also see on the inside of the orbit of the eye, you have the lacrimal bone. Again, you have the zygomatic bone, your cheekbone, and you have the maxillary bone. You can also see the alveoli, or they would be right here on the maxillary bone. The other thing you can see is another surface marking of the sphenoid bone. Here is the external appearance of the sphenoid bone. Here is the what's called the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone. So again, the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone. So we have the nasal bone, the lacrimal bone, we have the zygomatic bone, the maxillary bone, and then you have the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone. Another view, lateral view of the skull, just a little bit picture, bigger than the last one. We're going to start with the temporal bone, which is in here. Okay. What you can see of the temporal bone is you can see the mastoid process, which you can feel behind your ear. We have the external auditory meatus. We have the mandibular fossa. We have the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. So again, here is the zygomatic bone. This is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Then down here, you have this little pointy surface marking, which is called the styloid process. We also have the parietal bone up here, and you can also see the occipital bone in this view. So again, we have the temporal bone here. We have the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. We have the mandibular fossa, the external auditory meatus, the mastoid process, and the styloid process, all of the temporal bone, parietal bone here, occipital bone here. Now we're looking at the mandible. We're looking at the mandible. This is the mental foramina of the mandible. We also have the alveoli, which I showed you on another picture. We then have the coronoid process right here and the condylar process right here. This condylar process will articulate with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone and forms the temporal mandibular joint, or TMJ. So again, the whole bone is the mandible. We have the mental foramina here, alveoli here, the ramus here, coronoid process, condylar process. Go back, review this video.
You have worksheets that you can fill out. By the time you get to the test, you should be able to write out the names of all these surface markings and bones without looking at your list. So make sure you review and you can also take the practice test that's, that is located on Blackboard.